Welcome back to the Torque Test channel and welcome to another one of our four science videos. Today, diving into all of the different bolt grades you might come across and testing most of those on the dyno because, well, you asked for it and it's a good idea. There's a whole lot of different grades, classes, strength ratings and hardness ratings for bolts. So today we're going to touch on each of those grades and classes, test those strength claims to see if buying a more expensive higher grade bolt means it can actually take more impacting beans, then test their hardness to see for ourselves. Among steel bolts, that's going to include grade A or grade one, just to have a basis for sort of how bad bolts can be. Grade five or class 8.8, .8, we'll get into classes in a moment, which is the type of bolt we most often encounter with impact wrenches on vehicles. So maybe you do too. Grade eight, similar to class 10.9, which is sort of the go-to high strength bolt if you need more beans. Then class 12.9, which is supposedly like the next level over grade eight. And bow malloy, which is a pricey bolt made by MSC, aimed to be even stronger than that class 12.9. And we'll also be using some grade nine or L9 today, which is equivalent to that class 12.9 we just mentioned. Confused yet? Well, we're going to be finally throwing in a non-steel, non-ferrous bolt as well because there's not a ton of info out there compared to normal steel bolts. A 304 stainless bolt in this case classified as 18-8. Sort of pricey, often used in marine applications, but is it strong too? A lot of conflicting opinions out there, so we aim to shine some light on it. Let's get started at the bottom. This is a 307A, aka grade A or grade one bolt, a carriage bolt to be specific. To be honest, we were looking for a grade two bolt and sort of just ordered the lowest rated bolt with markings that we could identify it with, but it appears as though grade two bolts just have no markings at all, or only markings from the factory they're made in. So yeah, we flew in even under an unmarked bolt in this case by accident, it's way down here with 33 to 60,000 PSI proof to tensile strength in pounds per square inch, which matches the grade one up here. It's made from low to medium carbon steel and quite soft. It's hardness being rated in the Rockwell B scale, not even in the common C scale yet, which is what most steel made for a purpose would be found at. While numbers are great and all, after talking to a bolt vendor, Really, these are just the bottom of the barrel. The only thing they'll guarantee you about these grade A or grade one bolts is that a magnet will stick to it, and if you throw it in the ocean, it will sink. So let's get into it. The first thing we gotta do is calibrate this dyno for these bolts. Usually we're measuring those beans with a much bigger, much larger bolt. So let's set up this dyno to register pounds feet from a torque wrench for today's testing to compare to some book values. And you're likely running up against some half inch or 12 millimeter bolts in your daily life, like wheel studs and lug nuts, so it would be good to know those specifics compared to a torque wrench. We're using a new grade nine nut and washer on each test to keep things consistent and to just measure that bolt thread strength alone. Okay, so after converting PSI of bolt tension from this rig into pounds feet, we're seeing both 50 foot pounds on the wrench and 50 foot pounds on the dyno, looking pretty good. Now for the 307A grade one bolt. This six inch long half inch thread bolt can be found for around a dollar a piece. The recommended tightening for this bolt size with dry threads on a grade one is 32 foot pounds. So we should exceed that as we aim to destroy these things after all. Well, let's see. Here's the grade one versus an M18 mid torque in setting two of three on that gun. So 80 foot pounds, not bad if the book value for tightening is 32, but is that 80 foot pounds in a dead bolt now or can it keep going? Here's a longer 10 second test to find out. So again, 84, 84 foot pounds and she's done. That's not to say at 50 to 60 foot pounds this bolt was happy, but 84 is as much as it's ever going to make. In this case, a result of thread rollover and material missing, just too soft to really hold on to those threads. The next strongest bolt after this one would be grade two. Technically grade three exists, but you likely won't be coming across it. And grade four is just a class of threaded studs. 
Grade two bolts are equivalent to metric class 5.8 or lower. Metric classes are like SAE grades. They are just those number dot number markings you normally see on the top of bolts. Their strength ratings are in MPA, but convert pretty closely to the PSI ratings for many SAE bolt grades like 2, 5, and 8. Grade 2 or class 5.8 are some of the more common cheaper bolts you might find at a hardware store that don't have markings on the head. Usually a shiny white zinc coating, but can really be sold in any color or flavor. But as you might know, we like to impact a lot on this channel, so we want to hop right into grade 5, aka metric class 8.8, .8, the most common bolt type found on vehicles today. These have around double the PSI strength ratings of the first bolt we tested, are made from medium carbon steel, sometimes treated, and have a hardness range starting in the C-scale this time, something we'll be testing later. They have three lines on the head, sort of at 12, 4, and 7 o'clock, or a marking that says 8.8 .8 for metric threads. When buying bulk, like the rest of the figures we're going to be providing today, these cost about $1.83 a piece. Recommended tightening for a half 13 bolt like ours is 75 foot-pounds. Let's see if it can double that grade one's performance like its specs would imply. Here's 10 seconds of the mid-torque, which maxed out that previous grade one in only four to five seconds, shown on screen in black. One hundred and twenty two, so well up on the grade one, but has it hit its max yet? Let's turn the Milwaukee up to mode three, its max setting, and find out. One sixty five, one sixty five, and it's yielded, no longer increasing bolt tension despite turning more and more. This is in fact double the grade one, starting to make sense, those figures. But we came here to break some stuff, and this bolt isn't showing any obvious damage yet. So let's see if it likes the Thor gun for 10 seconds now. Nope, did not like that shot up to 145 quick, then shot right out the back of our dyno through our cardboard background. The bolt very clearly snapped in a sort of twisting shape as well. Next up is perhaps the most famous grade of bolt, the type of bolt you may even know about bolt grades to begin with because of. Grade eight, the most commonly available high strength bolt you can turn to when you want something to handle more beans. Also, more or less equivalent to metric class 10.9, which is what you'll find most wheel studs that you're impacting on are rated to. These reach 150,000 PSI tensile strength and are made from a medium carbon steel, but often a alloy steel now as well. You'll find six line markings on the head or the number 10.9 to signify one of those metric ones. And in bolt form, they are almost always a yellow color zinc, signifying often grade eight. These cost about $2.52 a piece. Recommended tightening steps up from 75 of the grade five to 106 foot pounds now. Let's see it with 10 seconds of mode two on that Milwaukee shown on screen in yellow. One hundred and thirty three and up on the grade five a bit, but neither of these bolts really being maxed out in this test. So we can probably skip to the mode three on the Milwaukee from now on. Here's that mode three. Two thirteen. now putting quite a gap on the grade five and not yielding yet either. I think it's going to take the Thor to be sure though. So here's that. So it was able to reach 217, but then sort of just crested and fell from there. Now quite buggered, the threads look sort of pinched and bent. I believe this is purely from bolt stretch. 
One thing that's important to remember is we're really just measuring bolt tension here, how much the bolt is able to clamp down on this dyno. The input torque may go up and down based on the bolt starting to stretch or fail, but what we're measuring here is effectively how much work the bolt is achieving. In real life, you might notice the bolt become harder for you to turn, but the tension may actually be going down because the bolt is just yielding. We're able to sort of skip your perceived input and just measure the results here. Up next is class 12.9. You may be wondering a few things on this one, like why is this a hex socket cap screw instead of a hex head bolt, and why we have different lengths shown here. Well, to the second point, no one had a six inch length in stock at the time, so we tried two separate lengths, which didn't end up making a difference on the dyno, which we're happy to learn. And why is this a socket cap screw at all? You're much more likely to come across one of these socket head cap screws in real life than one of those grade nine L9 bolts. So we thought this info would be more relevant to you. Bolts of this class sometimes have 12.9 stamped on the head, but on a socket cap screw, you often just have the factory name or nothing at all because everything within that class of bolt are all 12.9 and are not required to have an identifier. So while it's roughly equivalent to grade nine or L9, like the nuts we're using today, class 12.9 and grade nine range from 170 to 180,000 PSI of a rating and should be tightened up to 125 foot pounds according to this chart. Ours cost $3.45 when bought in bulk in this size, but can be more than twice that if you want specifically a grade nine one. Let's see if that means more beans though. Here's that maxed out M18 with the 12.9 in blue on screen. One hundred and eighty four oddly below the grade eight so far, but building torque slower isn't necessarily a sign of a weaker or worse bolt unless this is slowly failing already. Let's find out by hitting it with the Thor. So ultimately 230, 229, eventually surpassing the 217 of the grade eight that it was able to achieve and still holding on as well. The grade eight failed after this much impacting. Let's see where the Thor can take us if we just keep going, you know, just for fun. Well, not any higher, but certainly dead now, making even more holes in our background. This one's definitely sheared in half, but the grade nine nut was still threading on and off after this. Now for the bow alloy, 10 to $11 a pop, and our traditional dyno bolt that we use is around $24 a piece. For that price, while MSC technically categorizes these as grade nine because there's really nothing above that, these are rated for 200,000 PSI instead of 180 of a grade 9 and 150 of a grade 8. They either carry a B on the head of larger bolts or this weird sort of Illuminati looking insignia on smaller bolts. These are made from through hardened alloy steel of unknown hardness, so we'll have to see for ourselves in a bit. Here's a maxed out M18 with a bow alloy in white on screen. shoots right up rather quick, hitting 253 on a simple half inch bolt on this test, then sort of laying over. That likely high hardness causing forward threading progress of the bolt to shoot up in tension real quick. Now for the 1894 Thor with all of the Thor runs also on screen shown. So it hit 245, then split in half and shot out the backside like me on Taco Tuesday on a buy one, get one sale. That quick ramp up in tension, a bolt like this creates, not translating into a lot of 
high torque action before failure. But if all you're after is a tight bolt, you can get there in a hurry and call it a day with something like this. Let's remember, this is two times the recommended tightening torque for this class of bolt. So lastly, we have stainless steel 18-8 grade bolts. This is a class of bolts made from usually 303 or 304 stainless. And are normally used for their corrosion resistance on boats and such. But there's a lot of wishy-washy info out there about these, people assuming because they are brighter and shiny and cost more, they are stronger, which is ill-advised. But even spec sheets aren't all that specific about their strength, saying 65,000 PSI minimum, but 100 to 150,000 PSI typical, which is everywhere from a grade two to over grade five. This one goes for $2.68 a piece in bulk, which is more than a grade eight, but let's see how she does. Here's the M18 on high. Let's just try and kill it already, shown in red on screen. One hundred and sixty one, not bad, similar to the grade five, just taking a while to get up there. Not dead yet though, so let's see what the eighteen ninety Thor can accomplish. One hundred and seventy nine, and it didn't come apart like the grade five did in this test. Really a surprise for us today. I was always told not to use stainless steel in place of grade 5, and I've seen people use it in place of grade 8 because it's spendier. With the range 18-8 is allowed in PSI strength, I wouldn't use this result as gospel, but still some interesting info to learn head-to-head -head versus these others. And now here's every bolt's best run shown on screen. Seems sort of intuitive, right? The higher the bolt's rating, the more torque it was able to survive today. But for one, it means our dyno is working well, even at this small resolution of torque scale. And two, we use impact wrenches a lot, as you might imagine. And all these bolts are rated for clamping force and linear torque, like when used with a torque wrench. We couldn't find anything online whether that translates into more impacting force as well, if it's even comparable or, or what. And these guides with the max tightening torque, is that max and it will break like 10% more, 50%? Also very little info out there about when these will actually break or fail from tightening. Let's touch briefly on hardness. Hardness itself is not a defining characteristic of toughness, but it can be said that of the most tough alloys, those are generally heat treated and thus harder than others. The grade one or 307A and the 18-8 stainless we couldn't get a reading off of, which sort of makes sense. Their requirements are all on that lower B scale and we measure on a $2,000 Rockwell C hardness tester. Grade five bolts one inch and under are typically 25 to 34 HRC, and ours measures at 35, 36, looking towards the upper end of that scale, but nothing crazy there. Grade eight bolts can range from 33 to 39, and ours looks to be 35, 33 or so, which was surprising, but this is alloy steel, not just medium carbon steel like grade five, so it has some extra toughness properties, affording it that 150,000 PSI, not just this hardness alone. And probably a good reason that this one stretched rather than snapped, which is a preference if you had to pick one when a bolt fails. Class 12.9 bolts should be between 39 and 44 HRC, and our measure is about 41.8, pretty in line, but also pretty hard. But for the bow alloy, its hardness is not published at all or even indicated about. Looks like we're seeing 45, 45.3 HRC. The hardness of the bunch, and unsurprisingly so, if your target is 200,000 PSI tensile strength, it climbed up in tension so fast because it just refused to stretch or round over those threads with each impact. Something that's perfect for the much larger bolts we normally use on this dyno, that we're not so afraid of snapping in half due to that size, but it would be a big issue if it were to start stretching or wearing like on a lower grade bolt, as those impact forces from the guns wouldn't be registered on the gauge, they'd just be squandered into the bolt, sort of slowly killing itself. Appreciate you coming along with us on this journey of bolt discovery. Sorry this one ended up being a bit longer than expected. There's a lot to learn and show about something as simple as nuts and bolts as it turns out. I hope you came away from this a little bit more informed for your next fabricating project, or at least proved some things right in your head about your own suspicions. Thanks as always for watching.